give it entirely to Smartmatic. And that is why Smartmatic wrote a letter further to the directions of this court, which was, that letter was served upon our firm yesterday. And the letter is, written, is dated 31st August. On the right, and uh, this letter should be before this uh, court because it is addressed to the registrar. So I expect uh, judge, honorable members of this court that it's before you. Clearly it shows it is from Amsterdam. And it says that they will not give us access to the servers because it infringes on their intellectual property. What Mr. Masharia called today, the question of what happens to our data. We cannot even verify the election, contrary to the requirements of the Constitution that it should be verifiable. When the Honorable Court gives orders for scrutiny, Smartmatic says they cannot give us that access. We have set it out. Uh, it's set out in the uh, report that has been placed before this court, and the letter is there to confirm. What they then go ahead and do is to amend the orders of this court. And my ladies will see when you read that letter that they say that instead, they would like to recommend that the IEBC makes available, and they say the documents that they want IBC to give us, including some system logs, which as Mr. Murgor has indicated, not all those system logs were provided anyway. And the ones that were provided, we saw who had access. Our agents did indicate that when we asked, because this becomes very important on the question of access, and that's why the logs become important as well, when we asked as the court had directed in its ruling, order number one, that we get a password policy, they said no, it will infringe on the security. And that becomes extremely important in terms of knowing who had access to those servers in terms of confirming the personal, uh, the code or the policy on change of passwords. They refused to give that information. Again, IBC refused to give us information with respect to the RTS, Results Transformation Systems. Yet they want us to come here and believe what they are telling us with regards to the contents of the portal. Yet in their own Gazette notices, as you will find, there were some points where there was human intervention. And that is why they are unable to explain to this court, which we asked them to do and they were unable to do, to explain how the JPEG photos. My ladies, two more minutes. Thank you. They are unable to explain how an image is taken but ends up on the server as a PDF. In their own Gazette notice of 3rd August, which is, an, which is part of our evidence, uh, the petitioner in 002, they said that uh, in some certain areas, returning officers will be allowed to take photos using their phones and transmit the same to the Tallinn Center. So how then is it that all the photos on the portal are in PDF? and yet they refused, they declined and dishonored this court's order to give us information on the results transmission system. My ladies, my lords will find, when you look at the report that has been submitted, page 11, the judiciary report, that they refused to comply with orders number one, they refused to comply with orders number four, they partly Con, uh, complied with order number three and number four. Honorable members of this court, the ICT scrutiny was anchored on those four orders. They therefore failed to comply. They refused to open the server. Smartmatic wrote, and to the best of what they could tell us, uh, in addition to amending the judgment, they also say at the very end, that even citizens all over the world had full access of these tally reports and were able to add the results. Telling Kenyans, we have no additional claim of the, that information. We can tally like everybody else. It is our humble submission that IBC abrogated their duty 
IBC was not in charge in terms of the technical component, and that is why my brother Willis said they played picky picky ponky eventually to determine who won the election. Kenyan's electoral processes